you for having me here. I'm pretty excited about uh, talking here. Nervous, actually, so please bear with me. Uh, my name is Maciej. I'm a developer and system administrator, and I do the DevOps thing. And I will be talking about uh, the container runtime for FreeBSD. I will start about talking about the technology involved, how to place it uh, in, in the existing landscape. And uh, the point is that that technology here is not new. A bit, I will expand a bit on the container mindset, which is something new, about Docker and the rocket implementation. Then I will say a few words about the app container specification which Jetpack implements. And I will finish by talking about the Jetpack implementation itself. Uh, containers are a form of uh, operating system level visualization, which is something known when single host kernel uh, runs multiple isolated guest instances. These are also uh, FreeBSDJs. These, these are OpenVZ uh, virtual machines. It's old. Uh, the difference between the plain old uh, virtualization, uh, the hypervisor type virtualization, which is what we usually think about when we hear the word, is that in hypervisor type virtualization, the host runs hypervisor and completely independent guest operating systems. Each guest operating system runs it its own uh, kernel, has its own virtualized hardware, and is completely isolated from uh, remaining guests. And each guest believes it has all the hardware to itself. The OS level virtualization is uh, when kernel runs, isolates multiple parts of the OS, that they believe that they are the whole operating system, but they are isolated on the host level but they share, actually share the user space from the host. They are visible from the same process tree. They use parts of the same host file system. Uh, the difference between OS level virtualization and the hypervisor is that on one hand, there is less isolation. Uh, the guest and host operating system must be the same or at least binary compatible because we can run uh, Linux guests in FreeBSD jails as much as uh, FreeBSD Linux uh, system call emulation allows that. It has much lower overhead than for virtualization because the uh, system doesn't need to emulate whole uh, hardware. It just needs to enforce uh, access rules. There is no multiple kernels, no multiple operating systems to run. The isolation level is adjustable and it is possible to share resources. It is possible to cross mount via nullfs or bind mount parts of file system. It is possible to uh, share buffers for loaded files and so on and so on. And the technology isn't new. It started in 1982. It's as old as me actually. The CH root was introduced into Unix into this year and this is the system call that allows a process and its children switch and see selected directory in the file system as the root file system. Then in 1998, uh, FreeBSD got jails and uh, soon other operating systems followed. And uh, these, are, these uh, technologies are adding extra level of uh, separation, extra res additional restrictions on top of uh, CH root. The newest one is Linux C groups and LXC, which is what uh, modern container systems, the Docker rocket, are based on. And uh, these technologies isolate file system. Additionally, they isolate process tree, so guests can't see process processes of other guests and of host. They res additionally restrict isolation between environments, uh, the administrative system calls. Uh, basically, they are, these are technologies to make root behave like more isolated, more separate, 
on system. But the tooling around these uh, technologies is still in a virtual machine mindset. They treat guest as a complete system that is managed from the inside. You open console in a FreeBSD jail or SSH into the jail. You start uh, services. Uh, FreeBSD jails have their own uh, RCD and uh, RC system, their own init. The jails are usually ro long running and uh, mutable. They can change state. They can be managed like every, uh, like any server. So uh, they have also a management overhead of a whole server. You need to manage uh, access, uh, user accounts, backups, and so on and so forth. In January 2014, Docker showed up, and uh, it brought a new mindset, the container mindset. This is what people have been doing before as well in closed source, in platform as a service, uh, in-house. Docker was first open implementation uh, to uh, do this thing. The difference is that uh, the containers are service oriented. Each container is a single service. It is not a system. It is not an Ubuntu machine or a Debian machine. It is a Redis database, it is um, Nginx uh, web server, it is uh, Rails application server. The guest is managed from the outside by an API. Uh, you don't normally log into the containers. You call the API to start and stop them. If you need something changed, you destroy the container and create a new one. The images are immutable and can be distributed, can be shared. The Provisioning is fast and is copy on write. You s can almost immediately clone a new container from a pre-made image. The main points that distinguish the container mindset is the layered storage, explicitly defined interaction points. Uh, there is a limited number of uh, places where the container interacts with the uh, rest of the world. Immutable images, volta containers, and as I said, the service oriented. I will expand on it on the next slides. So uh, at the beginning we have uh, an image. It is just a base root file system of uh, Ubuntu long-term support version. It is read-only. Once it, it was written, you cannot change it. It is stable. And to prepare a containerized application, we create two child images. One is the Redis server. And the arrow means inheritance. This means that only the difference is actually remembered. One image is built on top of one another. So one image hosts the Redis server, another hosts Ruby language runtime. And from the Ruby image, we, get, we make another child image with Rails application. So let's say Bob wants to start a Rails application. It starts a container. A container is just, a container's root file system is writable layer on top of the image. And it's volatile. You don't care what happens to it. If you stop the container, it can disappear. You are not supposed to care about uh, that layer's data. And it's blazingly fast to start because you already have the Rails application. You already have the image directory. So you just put so we just, uh, in Jetpack, use ZFS clone. In uh, Docker, you just put an AUFS layer on top of it. You don't copy anything. But the application has precious data. So uh, for that, uh, we have volumes, which are persistent directories shared with containers. We need to explicitly say, this directory, we want to keep on host, we want to keep that data, this is important because these are user uploads. And the app wants to talk to a database, so it's linked with a second container that uh, hosts Redis. Redis has its own volume for persistence. Now let's move that arrow a bit uh, because when Alice wants to run a copy of the same app, she can just clone that. 
She doesn't need to have any copies of what's already in the images. She just has her own uh, contain small containers, the thin read-write layer and the volume. And if we want to host another app, we can add to the same hierarchy. Nothing is repeating unnecessary. And if Bob wants to scale his app, then he can just start second container to scale out that will share the same volume, the same Redis link. It will just work. So that's how it looks like. I hope it's, I hope it's not as confusing as it looks like now. And the explicit interaction points of uh, containers uh, you can uh, interact uh, by command line arguments and environment variables that start, that you start the container with. You define network ports, you define shared volumes, and you're absolutely not supposed to care about anything that's not in a volume. You got standard input, output, and exit status. Uh, you don't get to interact in any other way. The Immutability is very important. Images, once built, are read-only. Containers, right layer is a throwaway, is volatile. And volumes are the place where persistent and mutable data lives. Uh, because of that, images are reusable, are uniquely identified, and are verifiable. Once image is built, it is set. It is uh, one set, single set of files that can be identified by a checksum, by a crypto signature. You can verify that it's still the same. You can share it. You can publish it. You can reuse it multiple times. Because it's a read-only layer, you can safely clone uh, multiple containers, multiple children images uh, out of it. Because containers write layer is throwaway, you can easily exchange containers. If you want to upgrade software that is running in container, you just shut down the old one and start the new just like that. Or the other way around. You first start the new one, verify it works, then shut down the old one and redirect traffic. And uh, you are forced to clearly declare where is the data that you care about. And uh, I believe this is a good thing because you always know what to back up, uh, where can you write. And uh, the net effect is that uh, besides the, um, the image, the stable images, the read-only images, the management overhead of a running container is of a single service. You get the benefits of the jail isolation of the fact that containerized application is enclosed, is self-sufficient, includes all its dependencies, but uh, these dependencies are not copied, are not repeated, because uh, through the image hierarchy, they are actually shared. And you manage the container as a single service. Docker was uh, started in 2013. And it's actually pretty impressive, uh, because this is two and a half year old software that is so popular, that is so widely deployed. Uh, I don't know that if I've heard about any other software that's been so widely accepted so fast. It's the first free container runtime. Uh, and uh, that's not the word free, because uh, platform as a service uh, companies uh, had to be doing that before. Other companies uh, or administrators must have been doing it in-house. Docker was first tool to actually formalize that approach. It defined the, the approach, it defined the paradigm. It was adopted extremely soon. And uh, because it was defining the paradigm, it was implementation driven. But this has a lot of drawbacks. It was the only free container running for a lot of time. So it uh, basically started to develop a monoculture and didn't need to care this much, didn't need to care about the details, because people will use Docker anyway. 
It works, it exists, there's no competition. It prototyped the container paradigm. It was the first version, it was the first approach. But because of this extremely fast and wide adoption, it was locked into their uh, early design decisions. Because people were already using it, people were using it on production. There, were, there was already a lot of uh, pre-made images and they had to be compatible because of the success. And with that process, it ended up being implementation defined. And uh, with all due respect, Docker is awesome, but it's got its drawbacks. Nothing, there's no software that doesn't have faults. And uh, with this whole quick success, with the new approach, this quote comes to mind from the classic on project management that first version will always throw the first version away, will always re-implement. And Docker, because of its success, didn't get an opportunity to re-implement. I sincerely hope to see a Docker 2.0 and to see what they come up with at that point. But right now there are some design decisions like running with a huge binary blob, as root as a daemon, that listens on HTTP that are kind of unfortunate. So people from CoreOS, this is a Linux distribution that started soon after Docker got popular. It is a Linux distribution that uh, focuses on Docker and on containers, where the host distribution is just a thin layer to run systemd and Docker and any actual service uh, should be containerized. And at some point they uh, figured out that uh, they want to try to implement their own container runtime because, the, because they cannot agree and as they said they cannot defend with straight face to their clients some design decisions of Docker. Uh, so, uh, in December last year, they started their own project called Rocket, which is the first impl implementation of the app container specification. I will uh, talk about the specification a bit more later. Designed for composability, security, speed, and it breaks Docker monoculture on Linux. It is heavily implemented on, uh, it heavily uses systemd, so it's pretty much tied to Linux. What is 